Thank you, Ambassador Hong. We will now have the question and answer session with Ambassador Islam and Ambassador Ong. The session will be moderated by Dr. Palit. I will now hand the floor to Dr. Palit. Many thanks, Silvia, and uh, let me also join the rest of you in thanking uh, two excellent uh, special addresses that we have heard from Ambassador Shahidul Islam and from Ambassador Ong King Yong. And I must also uh, note that this is one of those very rare workshops where the speakers have been so disciplined in sticking to the time that we actually have surplus time for question answer, which is by itself a rarity. You know? uh, that, of course, should not be construed to mean that BIMSTEC hardly has much to be spoken about or discussed. I think we have enough, and we have just laid the groundwork for the discussion. So if I could take this uh, uh, sort of uh, opportunity to uh, start the discussions between our two uh, eminent speakers, and then we will uh, take questions from the floor. Uh, let me uh, just relate to something which Ambassador King Yong mentioned, that when it comes to ASEAN as a group, very often ASEAN comes back to this question of ASEAN centrality and reminds its members as to what exactly it needs to do going ahead to kind of retain the cohesiveness of the group and also to figure out an active regional work agenda. On the other hand, uh, Ambassador uh, Islam, you mentioned in your early remarks that there has been this view coming out of uh, some quarters, particularly academic quarters with respect to BIMSTEC, that BIMSTEC has a rather overloaded work agenda, which probably in an extent has affected uh, the working forward of BIMSTEC. And there could be this view that maybe if there were two or three specific items which BIMSTEC could have focused upon, then by this time it might have uh, acquired a far more visible uh, sort of position for itself when it comes to regional aid. So my question uh, in that sense to both of you would be that uh, in, in, in BIMSTEC we have seen the latest summit focusing on uh, subjects like energy connectivity, cooperation on terrorism and combating cross-border crime. But what, what do you think is a core agenda for BIMSTEC, which is relatively easy for this group to handle, brings benefits to all members, and at the same time, it doesn't uh, affect the members in you know, getting astray in the sense of getting lost with a large agenda. So maybe, Ambassador Islam, you might want to comment on this first, followed by Ambassador Ong King Yong. I have uh, indicated uh, in my statement that uh, the member states are uh, really interested to uh, uh, reduce uh, the number of uh, uh, sectors and uh, bring uh, focus uh, to the activities of BIMSTEC. But uh, it is also uh, seen uh, that uh, the member states who chose to expand the mandate to cover 14 sectors, uh, sometimes uh, they are hesitant uh, to pick and choose uh, which is more important and which is uh, less important. It entirely depends on uh, the member state uh, concerned. For example, some member states uh, find that agriculture is very important. Others find that counterterrorism is very important. Others would uh, feel that uh, uh, climate change and disaster management, uh, this is very important. But by and large, uh, there is a consensus that uh, trade and investment and uh, connectivity, uh, these two areas uh, form the core of the cooperation of BIMSTEC. And uh, this is where BIMSTEC has uh, comparative advantage. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, nobody expects that uh, the five uh, members of SARC and two members of ASEAN will uh, give up their uh, allegiance to the SARC and B ASEAN, uh, which are uh, very well-established organizations, and give uh, 
number one priority to uh, BIMSTEC all of a sudden. So uh, our job is to add value to the existing cooperation and not to replace any, any other uh, cooperation uh, that is taking place through ASEAN or, or uh, SARC. Uh, so we'll have to work on uh, the areas where uh, we have uh, comparative advantage. Uh, clearly, in, uh, in, in the case of connectivity, uh, we have much to do. Uh, uh, we can. We are in a very uh, suitable position to establish a link between uh, uh, South Asia and Southeast Asia, and trade and investment is also another area where all the member states are are interested. And there are other areas where uh, there is consensus that the issue is important, but the approach uh, may differ. So uh, we should be focusing on. Uh, issues where there is a clear uh, consensus, and then uh, try to develop consensus on areas where uh, uh, the issues are important, but maybe the approach uh, uh, is different, uh, depending on the vantage point of member states. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One of the things that I have been struggling to put my hand on is that many smaller or newer regional cooperation organizations, they are expected to do many things which people like ASEAN or EU have taken 50 years to put together. So it's not quite fair. Uh, if you look at BIMSTAT today, you say, oh, you can do A, B, C up to number 26 alphabet Z or Z. And the time allowed for all these things to be put together is limited. So I feel that perhaps one way to go forward is to really uh, canvas the views of people on the ground. What exactly is it that they need to start the ball rolling to register this concept of BIMSTAT. One of my professors at the university where I'm, the school RSIS I'm located, told me that there is a BIMSTAT motor vehicle agreement. This is a wonderful idea, you know, because if you have to drive from <laughs> Bangkok uh, to Dhaka, uh, or worse, Bangkok to Kamandu. It's physically possible. Maybe it take you uh, from the time you got your wife pregnant and the time the baby is delivered. <laughs> but it is physically possible. Yeah. However, no one give emphasis for this kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, even in ASEAN, we have a problem, Chairman. When Singaporean drove from Thailand to Myanmar, after hearing that uh, visa-free travel as a Singaporean passport holder. So a bunch of my friends, Meredy, took out two Land Rover, drove from Bangkok, uh, wanting to go to Rang Yangon. But at the border between Thailand and uh, Myanmar, they say, sorry, you need visa. Oh, but here, the news report say no need visa anymore. Uh, the guy was not aware, so he telephoned somebody, uh, and then my friend sent a WhatsApp message from Thailand to me, said they are at the border, how to get across. Now they say they need visa. So my question uh, was, what was the position of the uh, border checkpoint guards? And they say, no, no visa, no go. Yeah. So eventually it was no go because uh, the border uh, checkpoint officer in charge said that you don't need a visa if you fly from Singapore or Bangkok or Kuala Lumpur into Nebidor or to Yangon. You drive across, you need a visa. Why? Mm, this is the law. So my friends in the two Land Rover spent a good, uh, wonderful time at the border town in Thailand, couldn't get across. Yeah. So, if 
we cannot even solve a simple uh, bureaucratic adjustment like this. How do you expect anybody who wants to seriously think about doing business with his friend in Bangladesh from across Myanmar or uh, the guy in Bhutan wanting to do business with uh, the fellow in uh, Dhaka? They will be not even willing to try. So I think what is important is look at what is the practical um, situation. The motor vehicle, whether it's a truck or a car or a, even a motorcycle, uh, would be the most simple, uh, straightforward starting point. If I cannot bring my car all the way from Bhutan to Bangkok, and I need all these problems of waiting for clearance and application to be processed, then there's no way I can even think of doing business, selling my wonderful uh, uh, mango to the other country or bringing some wonderful uh, fabric from another country to another country within the Bimstead family. So I think while we are pushing to popularize the concept of connectivity under Bimstead, we have to think about this local um, uh, 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 wishes of the local population. I asked my friend in uh, Nanning in southwest China what made the cross-border trade between Vietnam and China successful. The answer was that uh, it's now very transparent and it's not difficult to move from China side to Vietnam side, and then from Vietnam side go back to China. Yeah, and as a result of that, the railway links between China and Vietnam open up considerably. They don't have to spend more than an hour waiting at the checkpoint if they drive a small truck or a van across and returning home. Uh, and as a result of that, cross-border trade flourish, flourishes and. What is more important is that the small company along the border towns have become now big companies. If you look at Myanmar, the cross-border trade between China and uh, Myanmar is so uh, active. And I met many of them coming from the northern part of Myanmar, driving their motor vehicles all the way to uh, Yangon. I actually met them at the Shan State. Chinese restaurant in Myangon, and they were all there with their, with their car, with the 30 trucks and um, 30 vans and Land Rover. Yeah. And what did they do? They bring in some special products from China to sell in uh, uh, Yangon. So this is something that you need to get fixed. Huh? Thank you, Ambassador. I think uh, you, you actually hit a very important uh, nerve over there because uh, there, there are some very odd rules. Like, say, for example, between India and Bangladesh, Indian trucks with Indian number plates can cross over into Bangladesh, deposit their stuff, but they cannot come back with cargo. <laughs> and same in ASEAN country. We same in problem. ASEAN country. So what that means is that they require dual uh, license plates, yeah. uh, which uh, has not happened in 25, 30 years. But I think th uh, the good part is that over the last two years, Bangladesh, uh, India, and Nepal have been able to work out a cross-border transport uh, agreement between themselves as part of the BBI and uh, framework. So maybe that is something which can be extended to the BIMSTEC uh, framework as well for greater movement of vehicles across borders. So uh, with that, uh, let me uh, try to pick up the questions. I can see uh, Ambassador uh, Major Munir Zaman. Uh, maybe what I'll do is that uh, I'll take three questions uh, together uh, for the benefit of uh, our two special guests, and then we will uh, come back again in blocks of three. So, uh, Major, if you'd ask your question, please. Thank you, Chair. I have a couple of uh, points to clarify from the Secretary General. I know that there are several initiatives in the region which have complementary visions and roles. I can mention a few like BBIM, BCIM, or BRI, which is a mega project, 
I'm also especially interested in your idea about the concept of Big B that was floated by Prime Minister Abe, which has got a similar regional approach of Bay of Bengal. So do you have any mechanisms to understand what kind of role they play? Are there overlapping areas, or are you in a position to coordinate some of your activities? Because I see that there are areas where you could be overlapping on their roles and tasks. The second point of clarification is that in the Kathmandu Summit Declaration, there has been a mention about the effort that you would make towards landlocked countries. So what are those efforts that you would like to make towards the development of landlocked countries of BIMSTEC? It is a part of the declaration that has come out. And the last point to clarify is that the military exercise that just concluded in Pune, was it coordinated by your secretariat or was it an initiative of member states? Because I'm slightly intrigued by the idea that if counterterrorism is a part of BIMSTEC agenda, which it is, why did it need a military exercise and not involve the police? Because in all member states, the police and the home ministry are the lead agencies to counter any terrorist activities. But in this exercise, it was exclusively for the military. And it also brought together the military chiefs of the BIMSTEC countries. So could you clarify this point? Thank you. So that takes care of three questions for the first round, I think three points. <laughs> so, Ambassador, for you. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the uh, BIMSTEC is well aware of uh, the various initiatives uh, that are being taken uh, uh, around uh, this region uh, covering South Asia and Southeast Asia to enhance connectivity. Uh, BBIN, for example, it involves uh, four countries of uh, BIMSTEC. Uh, and um, uh, there are other initiatives also which uh, can be useful uh, for uh, BIMSTEC uh, to work on, uh, for example, the Asian Highway uh, Project. Uh, uh, already some of the corridors have been identified so when we identify which corridors, uh, highway corridors are important for our region, we can take help from the experience of Asian highway exercise. Uh, but um, I would uh, also like to clarify that uh, our main objective is to uh, enhance connectivity between South Asia and Southeast Asia. And uh, there are overlapping uh, initiatives, uh, uh, so uh, we want to benefit uh, from other uh, uh, connectivity initiatives and where uh, there are missing links if other connectivity initiatives uh, are in a position to fill up the gaps, uh, that is very good, but uh, we are not particularly uh, in favor or, or against any particular uh, uh, connectivity initiative. Uh, we will uh, basically focus on our own initiative that we are taking. And uh, it is uh, in the nature of things, if we can establish connectivity uh, from New Delhi to uh, Bangkok, automatically ACMEX countries, uh, they have GMS, they have the, their connectivity initiative. So it will automatically link uh, to the east-west cor economic corridor, for example. And for that reason, we do not really have to promote uh, uh, that connectivity idea or synerg idea of synergy very openly. Uh, that, is, that is not needed. Uh, the second idea is uh, that landlocked countries, yes, the landlocked countries, uh, they should have more and more uh, um, options. For example, uh, Nepal and Bhutan, uh, if they are having uh, uh, the access, the possibility of access to the Bay of Bengal through Calcutta, that's no, not the end of the, the, everything. They can, they can and they should also have the possibility of entering the Bay of Bengal through Mangla port and Chittagong port, for example, in Bangladesh. So the objective of BIMSTEC will be to enhance connectivity and provide more options for the member states uh, to be connected. 
Uh, that is for the landlocked uh, countries, and as uh, uh, Dr. Pandey has mentioned, that uh, there has, has been a recent emphasis uh, on the inland water connectivity, and that is also something uh, that's, that may help uh, the two landlocked countries to ease uh, uh, their situation as regards connectivity to the sea. Uh, the third question, uh, General, that you asked about uh, military exercise. Uh, to begin with, uh, I would like to mention that uh, BIMSTEC is a member state driven organization where there was no secretariat at all for uh, many, many years. It came only in 2014. So all the sectors were driven, uh, uh, led by lead countries. And India happens to be the lead country for connectivity and uh, counterterrorism, uh, among others. And uh, I would say that India has been an active uh, country that is promoting uh, uh, counterterrorism cooperation and connectivity efforts. And uh, basically, uh, connectivity um, uh, and uh, uh, counterterrorism uh, two are really fl flourishing very well in the whole whole spectrum of uh, BIMSTEC uh, initiatives. Uh, so a lead country is supposed to and expected to uh, initiate, coordinate, and uh, organize uh, events under the BIMSTEC scheme. In BIMSTEC, uh, a uh, meeting or event of BIMSTEC becomes the core activity of BIMSTEC when uh, it is uh, uh, processed uh, through the through the secretariat, it gets the uh, approval and concurrence of all seven countries, and then it becomes a BIMSTEC event. And if one one uh, uh, member state uh, does not feel comfortable uh, to to uh, join at that particular time, the meeting is uh, almost always uh, deferred. Uh, so that all member states are comfortable and convenient to attend uh, the meeting. There are also other meetings like workshop and seminars and exercises uh, that the BIMSTEC member countries, they can take uh, initiative for this. And uh, this military exercise was uh, uh, initiated, organized, and coordinated uh, by India, which is the lead country for counterterrorism. In the area of counterterrorism, uh, uh, BIMSTEC has identified this as a one of priority sector. It has uh, uh, signed an agreement uh, to combat uh, international uh, terrorism, uh, uh, then uh, organized crime and drug trafficking, and uh, uh, there are many uh, many uh, mechanisms within BIMSTEC uh, which take care of uh, uh, BIMSTEC cooperation to combat terrorism, radicalization, and uh, drug trafficking, organized crime, and so on. Uh, so I would uh, certainly agree with you that basically uh, the cooperation in counterterrorism and organized uh, crime, the crux of the thing is intelligence sharing and in information sharing. And it is mainly uh, conducted through the law enforcement agencies. Uh, the military exercise. Uh, 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 that was initiated uh, by India. I would say that this is nothing uh, uh, new in the uh, contemporary world. Uh, you, we are seeing uh, joint military exercises bilaterally or multilaterally being conducted all over the world. Even in our region, we have seen platform for such exercise where uh, 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 India, China, Pakistan uh, work together in a military exercise. So I would, uh, I would say that uh, uh, the, the, the approach to counterterrorism cooperation from BIMSTEC remains the same. It's basically intelligence sharing and also collaboration uh, uh, among the uh, law enforcement agencies. But if uh, the member states uh, feel that uh, uh, there is also a need uh, to learn the approaches uh, of uh, armed forces of member states, uh, and if they take initiative, and if member states uh, participate in it, either in full capacity or in the capacity of observer, uh, there is nothing wrong in it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. So we can now move on to the next round of questions. Please uh, raise your hands and do identify yourself. 
Yes, Dr. Subaro. Uh, my name is Subaro. I'm a visiting fellow here at ISAS. Ambassador, Ambassador Islam, you've given a very detailed account of all the summits, conferences, conclaves, meetings, conferences of BIMSTEC over the last several years, and also about several initiatives that are planned for the years ahead. You've also spoken about reducing the agenda of BIMSTEC to a workable, practical agenda. My question is this. Can you please tell us three outcomes or three achievements over the next five years that you think, in your opinion, will mark the success of BIMSTEC? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Yes, uh, Major General Rahman. My uh, question is very relevant to the question that has been asked. So I'm taking this scope. Uh, the Ambassador Kang Ong says that people need to see the result. Th that is very, very important. And uh, 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 Ambassador Shudir Islam also said that perhaps some of the member country they feel that the number of priority sectors that has been identified has been overloaded. So these two are, seems to be relevant to each other, you know. Uh, I would just first ask uh, uh, Ambassador Shahid to let us know actually what kind of result uh, the BIMSTEC can uh, tell us. Uh, because uh, uh, I'm hearing only about the uh, you know, meetings hearing about the, you know, proposals, uh, plans, uh, not yet really seeing something concrete as a result. So, which might be my ignorance also, my lack of knowledge. So I would like to know from him if we have any visible result, because it is already 20 years. Uh, 20 years uh, seems to be a very short period, but uh, uh, for a human life span, it seems almost close to one third of my lifetime. So I'd like to see some kind of result before I expire from this world. And number two thing is that uh, we had been talking about BIMSEC, some of the issues like connectivity, energy grid connection, and many more. Uh, my question to, to the panel, both the speakers would be, even within the sub-regional forum like BBIN, we are yet to see any visible outcome, which apparently we started with a motor vehicle agreement, and we had been hoping to increase it to connectivity also, in like, for example, energy connectivity or some other connectivity. But when this has not yet been successfully done within the, within the four member states, where we are referring about the you know, taking care of the landlocked countries like Bhutan and Nepal. And how do you visualize that when sub-regional forum, like all the four member states are part of the member, member state, member of the BIMSTEC also. When these four sub member states, four sub-regional grouping could not achieve anything. And how do you really coordinate the similar thing or how do you expect the similar thing to happen with large number of member states, including the you know, uh, some of these countries of the ASEAN. So that's my question to the panel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rahman. Asanga. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my question is to Ambassador Shahid ul Islam. Um, how will you sort of uh, incorporate the dispute resolution mechanisms into the BIMSTEC if you are, because as you know, uh, SARC uh, is in dispute between two countries and that's why SARC is not happening. How will you prioritize a dispute resolution mechanism into uh, BIMSTEC and um, how would you prioritize it? So that's, that's my question. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe uh, what I will do is I'll start from Ambassador Ong on this occasion and then come back to Ambassador Islam. I will just talk about the last point about uh, dispute settlement mechanism. The lesson we learned from uh, ASEAN initiative on similar dispute settlement mechanism is that we spend so much time 
debating what to do, how to do it, and how should it be finally uh, written down as a um, set of guidelines. And up to now, no one activated. It doesn't mean that there, we don't have dispute, but no one wanted to put their faith in this ASEAN-level DSM, Dispute Settlement Mechanism. So for Bimstead, you are relatively new in this arena. Um, perhaps it is important to uh, avoid long, drawn-out negotiation of what to be in the guideline or what actually the dispute settlement mechanism should be. But just to uh, try out some simple arrangement, uh, which actually many of the ASEAN countries on their own have utilized. For example, um, they have uh, two or three guys coming together from two or three different countries to look at the particular issues and offer some advice here and there. Indonesia was particularly active in helping the Cambodia Thai uh, uh, dispute on the temple called Priya Bihar uh, on their border. Uh, and um, that incident, actually, we could activate the ASEAN DSM, but in the end, it was only Indonesia who actively pursued this and helped the two sides to um, stand down, so to speak. So if you ask me, we can try to do some DSM. Experts can come together and do something. Uh, draw up a relevant guideline and have a proposal for dispute settlement mechanism, but don't spend too much time with it because you will get ulcer and uh, you get migraine from trying to f settle this quickly. Uh, it is there. All the countries involved should continue to look at it and see how we can come up with a BIMSTED version of the DSM. But um, uh, don't allow that to deter you from doing other things which is pressing. For the other point, I think I should leave it to Shahid to tackle. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's very difficult to set a big uh, goal for our respective organization when there is still not enough buy-in from uh, individual part of the government in our respective countries. So I suppose Shahid's hard job is to try to get more people uh, to understand what uh, BIMSTED is. It is not just another opportunity to uh, have more meetings and travel around the region. Who wants to travel around the uh, region for endless meeting when, you know, <laughs> it's not easy to travel in the first place, huh? Yeah. yeah. But uh, that's a kind of opinion that some media and other uh, analysts have. You know, they just think that bureaucrats just like to come together and meet and talk about a lot of things about nothing. Not true. Uh, but um, I think it is uh, uh, useful for us to go back to what uh, General Abdul Rahman mentioned. What is it on the ground that uh, people feel has been uh, achieved? And don't be shy about blowing your own trumpet on this. Sometimes ASEAN setting, we got a lot of outcome from, good outcome, practical outcome. But when we look at it, no one know about it because no one talk about it. Yeah. Once the meeting is over, we go back to our desk job in headquarters, and then we forgot that, you know, eh, this is a very good uh, first step. You know? uh, I mean, as I said just now, I read about your uh, motor vehicle agreement. If you can achieve something, uh, you should really go out and blow your trumpet about it and uh, tell people that something has been achieved. And uh, yeah, they will say, what about the big thing? You say, step by step. Uh, you can't find a wonderful lady to marry unless you first get to know her first and she get to know you. Yeah? So I think that's the way to go. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Ambassador Islam. Thank you. I think uh, my uh, job has been made uh, easier by Ambassador Ong. Uh, 
uh, on the issue of dispute uh, settlement uh, especially. So um, the first three uh, questions that came from, uh, uh, the, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name. Dr. Subrao. And Dr. Subrao. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, the things that uh, we are expecting to happen uh, in the next five years is a visible outcome of the BIMSTEC process uh, will uh, include uh, the operationalization of uh, BIMSTEC uh, free trade area, uh, which will uh, enhance uh, the intra-regional trade and uh, we are not expecting that uh, within this time frame we'll be able to conclude uh, all the constituent agreements, including agreement on trade in goods, services, uh, uh, and other uh, areas. Uh, but at least we'll be able to uh, sign uh, BIMSTEC uh, uh, trade in goods agreement and some uh, facilitating ag agreements, uh, for example, uh, the BIMSTEC Customs Cooperation Agreement, and also uh, we'll uh, try to expedite uh, the signing of uh, mutual recognition agreement. These are smaller uh, type of agreements as opposed to the, the FTA per se, but this can be very useful uh, in the context of uh, South Asia and uh, BIMSTEC region where uh, non-tariff barriers are uh, uh, seen as uh, greater hindrance than tariff barriers uh, as regards uh, uh, regional uh, trade. Then uh, connectivity is another area where we expect to have a tangible outcome. The master plan uh, for transport uh, connectivity, uh, which is uh, being developed in uh, uh, collaboration with Asian Development Bank, uh, it will be finalized within this year. And uh, this uh, uh, master plan uh, will help the member states uh, to identify the priority projects uh, which uh, need to be addressed uh, to lay down the infrastructural uh, um, facility for uh, uh, transport connectivity. And on the other hand, this document is expected to be a marketing tool. Uh, uh, we are very hopeful, uh, as it happens around the world, when the projects are uh, seen to be uh, viable, then uh, ADB or World Bank, uh, others will come forward. That is our expectation uh, to help with uh, financial support. The other area where uh, we uh, wish to, we expect to see a concrete uh, uh, benefit is the energy sector cooperation. Uh, already we have been able to um, sign the MOU on grid interconnection, and now the member states will have to work on uh, harmonization of administrative and technical aspects uh, so that uh, the grid interconnection is ready by uh, the expected, uh, we are expecting it will be ready by 2020, so that it will facilitate electricity trade uh, within, uh, among the member states. And uh, the other thing which is uh, part of connectivity um, and part of business promotion and part of people-to-people uh, -people <coughs> contact uh, enhancement is uh, the easier movement of uh, people across the region. So uh, one uh, emphasis will be to get concrete result uh, from the discussion and deliberation of uh, the expert group on BIMSTEC visa, visa matters uh, uh, to get some concrete benefit to start with uh, easier movement for the business community within uh, the region. And uh, uh, General Rahman, uh, my friend, uh, uh, he has uh, expressed his uh, skepticism about uh, the ability of BIMSTEC uh, to really deliver something uh, within a short time, especially in the areas where uh, 
Already other initiatives are not really working well. Uh, in particular, uh, BBN initiative where uh, uh, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, and Nepal are involved. And Bhutan has expressed uh, its, uh, mm, its inability to join the, this agreement, this arrangement uh, for the time being. So we are aware of it. And uh, basically, you are correct that uh, if something does not work for four countries, how do we expect that the same thing will work for seven countries? It may work um, for several reasons. Number one is that the context will be different. And uh, we have had uh, uh, some informal uh, exchanges with the Bhutanese leadership. Uh, they are not saying that they are uncomfortable with uh, having a BIMSTEC motor vehicle agreement. But uh, to address uh, the, the, the issues of uh, 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 the member states who are not ready at the moment to join uh, this initiative, uh, the agreement has been changed in a way there is a clause that if a member state uh, is not prepared to join this, uh, now they can do it later on. They can opt out. And when they think that they are ready, they can come and join the agreement. So that shows a kind of uh, a lesson that has been learned from BBIN, if you like. Uh, and uh, BIMSTEC is aware of that. Uh, but uh, again, uh, uh, some of the things uh, are easier than other things. For example, a coastal shipping agreement is showing all signs that it can be concluded uh, uh, sooner rather than later. As opposed to that, the motor vehicle agreement will have to address uh, certain things. And it may take longer period uh, of time uh, compared to the coastal shipping agreement. Then uh, there was uh, this uh, dispute uh, resolution mechanism. I think uh, you have got uh, the answer from Ambassador Ong. I will just add a little bit about the context uh, where uh, in which uh, the mistake is working. In fact, uh, uh, BIMSTEC uh, does not want to replace uh, the bilateral and other regional uh, initiatives, or obligations, and uh, undertakings of member states. So if there are uh, issues, uh, dispute, uh, disputes, uh, those are not necessarily required to be brought uh, to the BIMSTEC uh, forum, per se. Uh, the bilateral arrangement among the member states can uh, take care of that. There is also the possibility of wide diplomacy. I will give you the case of uh, Rohingya refugee issues. Uh, this uh, became a very, uh, uh, I would say that uh, uh, after the, after the uh, summit, uh, the, the people in Bangladesh in general, the scholars, the media, think tank, they became extremely critical of the government why this issue was not raised at the forum. From my perspective, uh, when journalists ask, I said that they have shown, both Bangladesh and uh, Myanmar have shown a great deal of diplomatic maturity by not uh, bringing this issue uh, to this forum at a time when the, the, the forum is not yet prepared to address. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, let us see how this um, charter and rules of business of uh, BIMSTEC develop. And in the meantime, I will carry uh, back uh, home uh, the, the advice that uh, I received from Ambassador Ong, that uh, it's better not to be too ambitious and too elaborate on the subject. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Thapa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a small query that I would like to hear from both uh, panelist, Ambassador Young, who has served as the Secretary General of ASEAN, and Ambassador Sayudul, who is uh, the current Secretary General of BIMSTEC, and who has a, a major responsibility of steering uh, this regional organization to a newer height. Ambassador Young uh, mentioned about geo geostrategic location of uh, this region, and he briefly tossed upon the sensitivity uh, part. Well, we have a serious problem of terrorism, 
cross-border crime, uh, drug and human trafficking. But at the same time, what we have to understand that BIMSTEC as a regional organization is at the very, very initial stage yet to take off. There are many other priorities areas where we need more focus. So in that context, yeah, we need to collaborate, cooperate uh, in addressing the security threats coming out from uh, terrorism, cross-border crime. And we can cooperate bilaterally as well as by creating a multilateral mechanism also, exchange of information, intelligence. But at this initial stage, don't you think that uh, it is wise on the part of uh, the member states, as well as uh, BIMSTEC as a regional organization to uh, avoid the military exercises sort of thing, which uh, raises unnecessary uh, suspicion and misunderstanding among the uh, member states and also in the region as a whole. This is what I would like to hear um, based on the experience working in the ASEAN countries and uh, Ambassador uh, Sayyidul Islam, who is the current uh, Secretary General, that uh, wouldn't it be wise for us to remain out of this military exercise, which might eventually uh, give a notion of a security alliance or military pact sort of thing. Yes, this is it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thapa. We have time for two more questions. Uh, so if there are others who are willing to. Yes, Rajesh. Professor Rajesh Basru. Yeah, sure, we can. But I think she's getting in the mic. I wanted to ask uh, the Honorable Secretary General about uh, investment policy, because I was looking at the website of BIMSTEC, and there is an investment group, working group, but it hasn't met since 2015, which seems rather odd, because investment, foreign investment, has been a particularly sensitive and important issue in many of the countries which are members of BIMSTEC. Uh, and uh, I mean, as uh, Ambassador Ong mentioned, of course, uh, the dominant position of China in the region uh, is also an issue that has to be uh, dealt with. In this context, I, I particularly want to know, because uh, in today's uh, Looking at a bunch of uh, reports today, I saw that uh, Japan has in, has in the pipeline something about something like about uh, five billion dollars uh, of investment in four countries in BIMSTEC, uh, excluding Thailand and India. So that is quite a substantial amount. So I think it would be a useful thing to perhaps to look at you know what are the alternative sources of investment that are coming in and also to know what is, if any, a BIM common sort of BIMSTEC policy to deal with uh, uh, extra regional investment as well as, of course, uh, intra-regional investment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rajesh, one final question. Yes, Dipinder. Thank you. Just a quick question on the issue of trade integration and facilitation. Um, could the Secretary General talk about any initiatives that have been taken to facilitate uh, efficiency in logistics, basically ease the movement of um, goods and services? You spoke of the motor, uh, motor vehicles agreement earlier. Uh, are there any other concomitant measures uh, being initiated? Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we will round up the discussions uh, with the uh, Final responses from Ambassador Islam and Ambassador Ong King Yong. Ambassador Islam. Thank you. A uh, number of questions. Uh, uh, with regard to the question of 
Mr. Kamal Thapa, Honorable uh, former Deputy Prime Minister of Nepal, uh, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you uh, and Nepal, through you to Nepal for hosting a very successful uh, Beamstech Summit uh, last uh, month. Uh, yes, definitely, um, we are uh, very aware of uh, the central uh, position of Beamstech between South Asia and Southeast Asia. And these countries are uh, surrounding the Bay of Bengal, which is uh, very, very important uh, as regards the international trade and uh, supply of uh, uh, oil and other uh, uh, energy sources. Uh, and uh, there are many uh, initiatives going on, and uh, you uh, have asked whether uh, it is better to avoid uh, the, uh, the uh, things like military exercise. Uh, so as I said, um, and the military exercise was uh, uh, not uh, a uh, mandated uh, core activity of uh, the BIMSTEC. But it was uh, initiated, organized, and supported and participated by the BIMSTEC member states. Uh, for example, I am participating in this program. It does not make that this is a core program of uh, uh, BIMSTEC, uh, that the, the name of BIMSTEC has been used, and there is no problem in it. Uh, I'm very comfortable with this idea. Now, uh, it will be up to the member states uh, to examine whether uh, it was uh, the, the, the expected uh, outcome and results, uh, if they are satisfied with that. If they think that uh, it's a good thing and we should continue doing this uh, every year, they will do. If they think that uh, it should rotate uh, among other member states, uh, they will decide. And if they think that, no, it is not worthwhile, so they will discontinue. So I think uh, it will depend on the member states themselves. It's not the secretariat who decides uh, uh, whether it should continue, whether it's a good thing or bad thing. Everything that deci is decided by member states is good for the secretariat. We don't go for any value judgment about the decision of the member states. Having said this, uh, I would also like to say that uh, uh, all the sectors are being led by lead countries uh, in the current arrangement. So uh, there are many important sectors. For example, poverty alleviation is led by Nepal. And trade and investment is uh, led by Bangladesh. And uh, energy cooperation is uh, led by Myanmar. So there are all the Thailand is responsible for public health and people-to-people -people contact. So I would say that. Uh, uh, the development of uh, sectoral cooperation has not been even because it all depends on the capacity and intention of the member state responsible to lead the sector. And uh, so um, if India has devoted more attention to the development of uh, counterterrorism sector and uh, connectivity sector, we cannot blame India for doing good, I mean, taking more interest. I mean. If Bangladesh takes uh, additional interest in promoting trade, nobody is telling that you don't do it. So I think uh, it will take time, and uh, it will entirely depend on the member states themselves, which areas of cooperation they want uh, to flourish. Because when there are too many areas, obviously some areas will stand out, and some areas which, uh, uh, although they may sound good and they are useful, but uh, if the member states think that uh, uh, there are hardly any uh, possibility of doing good in this area. It will, it will uh, uh, not, not, uh, not be on the same, uh, same uh, uh, rank of, uh, as far as the priority of the organization is concerned. So I think uh, we'll have to wait to see as to which areas are receiving more interest uh, and attention from the member states. And that will be the deciding factor uh, in the whole thing. And then uh, the other question, yes, it's, <laughs> yes, Mr. Ajesh, and uh, good services and investment. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, these are uh, uh, the three constituent agreements will be signed uh, for these uh, uh, three subjects under the framework uh, agreement on Beamstake. Uh, uh, FTA, 
we have uh, made uh, uh, considerable progress uh, in uh, finalizing uh, the text of the uh, agreement on trade in goods. And I suppose uh, it will take further time uh, to develop uh, same kind of consensus on the text of uh, agreement on investment and services. These are, these are more uh, uh, complicated. So uh, for the uh, policy, if you like, uh, that will be based on these agreements for intra-regional uh, investment and uh, 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 service trade. Uh, but uh, for that, we'll have to wait. The other question was, uh, what is the BIMSTEC's policy about receiving outside uh, investment? Uh, you see, investment is uh, being uh, uh, invited by member states uh, bilaterally, mostly, and BIMSTEC does not have any problem. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, if there is a common uh, BIMSTEC project, then only the question will come, which kind of funding we receive. As we understand, uh, uh, investment, uh, receiving investment uh, from uh, outside the region will uh, mainly be dominated by the individual decision of individual countries. If they are comfortable to receive uh, funding from World Bank or a bilateral donor, they can do it. Uh, for our projects, we will uh, have to, the Secretariat has been given the mandate that uh, we'll have to give proposal uh, to the member states uh, if we want to initiate, it, uh, initiate any collaboration with ADP or World Bank and so on. But uh, my understanding at this time is that uh, uh, BIMSTEC is focusing more on multilateral uh, partners than bilateral partners. Uh, as far as uh, investment in uh, BIMSTEC sponsored uh, projects and studies are concerned. Uh, this is, uh, I can say this much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador Ong, for your final comments, maybe. My school, the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies, we have a big center on counter-terrorism and study of political violence. And uh, one trend that we observe in the last three years is the intensification of terrorist activities in pursuance of rather strong military strategy or tactics. In some cases, the terrorist groups actually were audacious enough to take over certain small urban area or even a larger town like Malawi in the Philippines. Um, many of you read about the siege of Malawi by the disjointed groups of ter terrorists and uh, uh, radical uh, uh, Muslim um, in the Philipp southern Philippines. The military in the Philippines said they could get rid of them in five weeks. Actually, in the end, it took them more than five months. And the damage is still there. Now, many parts of the city of Malawi uh, lie in destructive and dilapidated state. The lesson learned from these uh, experiences is that the military forces have to get involved in CT and CR uh, uh, work. CT stands for counter-terrorism and CR stands for counter-radicalization work. Because we feel that, at least for the ASEAN countries, the military operation, the military doctrine, the military training, they have a certain uh, special quality to deal with some of these terrorist activity. So we are no longer dealing with a guy that sees uh, an aeroplane and 
try to blow it up unless you give them, give in to their demands or this and that. The terrorist group today, uh, at least in the Middle East and part of uh, Asia now, they are out on a full-scale military type operation. So the sooner the military forces of our respective countries coordinate and work with the law enforcement agency like the police, the better it is for us. So in recent months in ASEAN circle, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei, we have learned from the Malawi siege and the lessons there. And the military forces, in particular the navies, have become more coordinated. And they really need to get together and do joint exercise and to do even uh, socialization among themselves with the police in order to tackle these kind of terrorist threats. So I suppose if you have a situation in the Bimstead region where border areas are actually quite porous, quite open, um, and there are easily uh, people who can join the whatever more organized unit to take more military type action, you will have to rely on the military forces to handle some of these uh, uh, terror challenges, terrorist challenges. So this idea of the military field training, which some of the countries in Bimstead have gotten together, I guess at the initiative of uh, India, uh, is actually quite commendable uh, because you really need to think more than just police enforcement. Police are trained, policemen are trained in a certain way. We are not allowed to uh, do certain things if you apply the police uh, rules and regulation. And the bad guys are really coming at you as a uh, opposing military force. So this is something that we cannot run away from. But actually, in the case of Bimstead, if you allow me to say so, the military cooperation coming together for more field training and tabletop exercises, for example, actually will help to build more confidence and trust among the different uh, military uh, forces. And one of the most useful lessons we have from our ASEAN experience is to have our different military working together in a natural disaster situation, what we call HADR, Humanitarian <coughs> Assistance and Disaster Relief uh, uh, Cooperation. HADR um, uh, cooperation has actually brought all the uh, ASEAN military forces closer together, and they have now have their own contact points and network. They help to build confidence, and they don't look at discussion of anything military to be immediately touchy and sensitive. And I think this is good. In the case of uh, working in Indonesia, recently in Indonesia you have earthquakes, uh, volcano eruptions and whatnot. All they did was pick up the phone, the local regional commander, talk to their counterpart across the border, and they got going, which is actually very expeditious. The local population like it because action is taken straight away, and they see the cooperation between the police, law enforcement agencies, and the military. So this is something that um, uh, I, I suppose as we go along in our regional uh, development and cooperation, you can't avoid. What we see from RSIS uh, research point of view is that it brings about more confidence and trust among the different military defence forces. The issue of um, investments and trade and logistics which Dibinda brought up, I suppose you have already started to cover this in the proposed uh, BIMSET free trade area agreement and also specific subcommittee of the investment board or the uh, 
logistics sector. But the learning point for us from ASEAN experiences is, again, we try overly ambitiously to do many things at the same time. It's not so easy. Uh, simple thing like we say, let's computerize our trade statistics and facilitate easy documentation uh, when any businessman or company apply for import or export uh, licenses or permit. Uh, wow, you get into all kinds of issues because who is in charge of this kind of information? Where is the data center? Where is the depository? And you get woven into many, many uh, debates. So hopefully in the BIMSET uh, experience as you are starting, try to find a way to avoid this uh, area. Uh, if you say that there is a Japanese uh, initiative prepared to invest in uh, something in uh, the BIMSEC area, uh, why not you all just target the Japanese and work with them? And if you get some early results, a good win, you get what I call low-hanging fruits, then you can say, okay, from this experience with the Japanese, we learned that we must be careful about this, or certain countries in BIMSEC have to be aware of such kind of market conditions and so on and so forth. So I think the way forward is perhaps to encourage more research institution, you know, COSAT and uh, ISAS and whatnot. There are many think tanks and uh, research institutions in your BIMSEC countries. Encourage them to get together and do more specific research on specific situations offers from Japan or offers from China or offers from whoever and say, okay, how can this be done? And you have many talented people from BIMSEC country working in ADB as well as the World Bank. They can help to come and give you a uh, rather academic yet um, practical uh, 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 perspective. So this will help to build confidence and also to basically zero in on what is important to get the ball rolling, rather than to try to uh, follow what other regional countries like uh, ASEAN or you know SAD or EU have been doing. Because these guys struggle through 20, 30 years to reach this particular point. And you are just starting off, so yeah, my ministers in ASEAN always say we, we frog leap or leap frog. But hey, if you are not able to get the confidence or conditions on the ground, you can say all these things, but it's not going to work. So perhaps do more research, get people together to talk like this, yeah, and then you get uh, more understanding of some of the challenges. And if nothing else, well, you can say we walk away knowing that there is a problem and how can we fix it is our uh, next subject of debate in our intellectual discussion. Many thanks, uh, Ambassador Ong, and uh, I think we can now uh, sort of be successfully uh, confident about the fact that we have reached a position where we at least know this much that uh, BIMSTIC has not been as visible as it should have been, but that does not mean it remains so in the years that are to come, and uh, definitely the conversation has uh, been developing around BIMSTEC, a lot of activities, not just research, but also institutional activities, including Track 2 initiatives, are also taking place around BIMSTEC. And uh, from ISAS, we hope to uh, be in a position to keep contributing to this conversation and debate. So with that, let me hand this over to Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Islam, um, Ambassador Ong, and Dr. Palit. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now break for a lunch reception just outside the auditorium. Please be back to the auditorium by 1.40 p.m. Thank you.